Over 2,000 people have died from the Ebola virus. The World Health Organization has warned that it's likely to get worse. The impact is already placing a huge economic burden on impoverished countries that have been affected by the epidemic as governments fork out millions to contain the spread of the virus. The World Health Organization predicts that $600 million will be needed to fight the outbreak money that Africa doesn't have. There are individual costs associated with each step of trying to contain the virus and also in terms of trying to educate the population about um, correct methods of um, interacting with people who are ill or methods of protecting themselves. That's an immediate cost that governments are having to deal with. The after effects will come at a higher price. Travel to Africa has already slowed significantly with many scared of contracting the disease. In the long term, trade, services and food production will slump too. Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone have so far been the worst affected. The fragile economies have a combined GDP of $13 billion. High rates of poverty will be further exacerbated by the epidemic. It's going to take them some more time to be able to rebuild what they've lost, particularly in terms of healthcare costs and in terms of international debt as well, because they've been reliant on the international community, communities for support. And now they're relying again, particularly on multilateral organizations and donors. Countries such as Cote d'Ivoire that align the affected regions have shut down their borders. Bans have been placed on people traveling from the West African region in an attempt to contain the virus. Because of the connections between those three economies and the rest of West Africa, mainly Nigeria and Ghana, and the connection between West Africa and East Africa, mainly because of the many flights that Kenya Airways conducts on a daily basis to just about every city on the African continent, and because of the connection between Kenya and Southern Africa, as a result of that, you found that what should have been a West African problem became a Pan-African problem. Panic is starting to spread amongst business and investors. Multinational companies and mines have reduced operations temporarily. Experts, however, believe while there may be a slump in foreign direct investment in the short term, it will not deter long-term investors. People are still investing in the African continent. But as I say, it might just be that instead of having an approval of an investment by September or by December, you might have it next year. I don't think people are going to decide against African investment because of Ebola. The World Health Organization has warned that Ebola infections could rise up to 20,000 in the next six months, creating an even bigger impact on the African economy. Samitra Nadu, CCTV, Johannesburg.